Let's have a go at solving the integral of the fourth root of cosine of x, or the cosine function, by sine to the fifth power of x with respect to x. Alright, this looks like quite a funky integral, so let's uh, rearrange it to something a little bit more familiar. This integrand here I can rewrite as cosine to the one quarter power of x by sine to the fifth power of x. So already it looks a little bit more familiar because we've got a power of cosine by the power of sine. And if we look even a bit closer, we can see that we have more or less an even power of cosine and an odd power of sine. So an even power of cosine, even though it's not an integer power, it's still we can still consider it as an even power and use a strategy that we're already familiar with. And that is to reserve a sine of x and write everything else in terms of cosine of x. So how do I do that? So let's write sine to the fifth power of x as sine to the fourth power by sine of x. Copy everything else down. Cosine to the quarter power of x. All right, now this middle sine to the fourth power, let's consider this as sine squared of x, all squared. Okay, well now I can apply the Pythagorean identity. So we know that cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x is always equal to 1. So that means I can rewrite the sine squared of x as being equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of x, right? So circle that off. So in the brackets here, we have 1 minus the cosine squared of x. And let's copy everything else down. So the sine squared of x, so sine of x, sorry, and the cosine to the fourth, to the quarter power of x at the front. Okay, so this is now our integral. So let's recap. We have reserved one sine of x here, and everything else is written in terms of cosine squared of x, or cosine of x, sorry. And because we've set it up like this, we can simply now use a substitution. So let's let u equal the cosine of x. Then differentiating, we have du on dx equals negative sine of x. And I can rewrite this in differential terms. So du equals negative sine of x by dx. And actually, let's rewrite this as negative du equals the sine of x dx here, because we've got sine of x dx here. Okay, so making the substitutions, we have the integral of cosine is u, so we have u to the quarter power by 1 minus u squared, all squared, by, well, sine of x dx is equal to negative du, so it's by negative du. The negative can come out the front. Let's expand these terms. Uh, I'll keep the u to the quarter power the same, but binomially expanding the second term, we have 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth power du. And now let's expand the front term into the brackets. Okay, so expanding through, we have negative of the integral of u to the 1 quarter minus 2 by u squared by u to the 1 quarter plus u to the fourth by u to the 1 quarter and of course du. And now adding the indices, we have negative of the integral of u to the 1 quarter, that still stays the same, minus 2 by u to the 9 quarters plus u to the 17 quarters du. Now we have three powers of u, so we can simply apply the power formula. So we have negative outside of u to the 5 fourths, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, minus 2 by u to the 13 fourths, divided by 13 on 4, plus u to the 21 on 4, divided by 21 on 4. And of course we need to include a constant of integration c. Let's beautify this expression a little bit by taking the negative into the brackets. So we have negative 5 
by u to the power of 5 on 4 on 5, plus 8 by u to the power of 13 on 4 divided by 13, minus 4 by u to the power of 21 on 4 divided by 21, plus c. Okay, so to complete this, we need to back substitute u equals cosine of x. So we have negative 4 fifths of the cosine to the 5 fourth power of x plus 8 on 13 by cosine of the 13th on 4th power of x minus 4 on 21 by cosine of the 21 on 4th power of x plus c. Okay, now it's perfectly fine to leave the answer in these terms. There's no need to go further than that. But if you've plugged this integral into an online integral calculator, you may have seen the result written like, the result of the integral is equal to negative 4 by cosine of 5 on 4th power of x outside of 65 sine to the 4th power of x plus 80 sine squared of x plus 128 all over 1365 plus c. All right, so let's see if my result is equal to this result. Well, with my result, I can certainly take out a negative 4 by cosine to the 5 fourths. And remaining in the brackets, we have 1 fifth minus 2 on 13 cosine to the 8 on 4 of x minus, sorry, plus 1 on 21 by cosine to the 16 on 4 of x. I'm going to leave off the plus c for now because I'm lazy and I can't be bothered writing it all the time, but I'll include it at the end. So 8 on 4 simplifies down to cos squared of x, and 16 on 4 is cosine to the fourth power of x. Now, just as we can write sine squared of x as equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of x, we can write cosine squared of x as equal to 1 minus the sine squared of x. And this trailing term here, we write this as 1 minus the sine squared of x all squared, because it's simply cosine squared all squared. Let's now expand this 2 on 13 in. So expanding the 2 on 13 in into the brackets, we have 2 on 13 minus 2 on 13 by sine squared of x. And uh, we must not forget this negative out here, so it's negative 2 on 13 plus sine, uh, plus 2 on 13 sine squared of x. Uh, let's copy everything else down now just for clarity. Now expanding this term, we have, if I apply the squared to the brackets here, I have 1 minus 2 sine squared of x plus sine to the fourth power of x. And let's multiply this 1 on 21 into the brackets. So we have 1 on 21 minus 2 on 21 plus 1 on 21 sine to the fourth power of x. Sorry, minus 2 on 21 sine squared of x. Okay, must state everything to be clear. So let's copy everything else down. We have 2 on 13 sine squared of x plus minus 2 on 13 and the 1 fifth out the front. So let's collect all the numbers on their own. So we have 1 fifth minus 2 on 13 plus 1 on 21. Now for the sine squareds, so if I take a sine squared out, we have 2 on 13 and minus 2 on 21. And finally we have plus sine to the fourth power divided by 21. All right, these three numbers here simplified down to, they have a common denominator of 1365 and the numerator is simplified down to 273 minus 210 plus 
65. This term simplifies down to 16 on 273 by sine squared of x. And let's leave the trailing term as it is, sine to the fourth power of x on 21. Adding all of these numbers, we have 128. Okay, so the only common denominator between all of these is 1365. So we have 128. 16 needs to be multiplied by 5. So that becomes 80 by sine squared of x. And 21 multiplied by 65 is 1365. So the top becomes 65 sine to the fourth power of x. Okay, so we still have negative 4 by cosine to the 5 fourths power of x out the front. And of course, we must include the plus c on the end. So how does this compare? Other than switching around the order of the additions, these two are, in fact, the same result. All right, that will do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you have found this useful. Please subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you with your studies. Share it with your study mates or friends. I would appreciate any small donation as your contribution will be able to help me to create more content for math students all around the world. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.